Hello everyone, uh, so uh, welcome to Tea with ATA and uh, welcome uh, to our second session. Today with me, Professor Zaid. Hi, Professor Zaid. Hi, Dr. Ahmed. How are you? Glad, glad to be good. back here again with you. Thank you so much. And uh, today's question from Anthony. So Anthony said, my manager always asks me if I need help. And I always say no. I'm worried about saying yes, I need help. So my manager think I am incompetent to do the job. I always seek perfection and I am worried about making mistakes. Please, I need your advice. Thank you, Anthony. So I, I let's start so. the conversation. Professor Zayn, I'm ready. I think it's a very interesting question, and, and it's one that happens when people feel a little bit insecure at work sometimes, that they're afraid to let somebody know that they're, they may have an issue with something. And I think one of the first things that we have to look at here is that from the standpoint of a manager, a supervisor, somebody in charge, somebody who admits they have a weakness is not saying that they're incompetent. That's actually a strength. The fact that somebody can admit that they don't know something is far better to ask for help than it is to mess up because you didn't want to ask for help. And so when we look at people in leadership positions and we look at people in, in the following positions, one of the things you have to look at is to recognize what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are. And asking for help is a strength, it's not a weakness. It doesn't mean you're incompetent. It means you have something more to learn. I totally agree with you. I feel like it's um, it's a sign of maturity and self-awareness when you acknowledge that you need help, when you recognize that sometimes uh, you might not be able to do it alone by yourself. So I totally agree with you, uh, Professor Zaid. Do you feel like acknowledging the offer is really important in this situation or how do you see that? Oh, I think, I think it's important to acknowledge the offer. Uh, I, I think it's important to be able to say, you know, maybe I don't need help at this time, or maybe I don't need help on this project. I think I've got this. But it's also okay to say, you know, let me get into it. Let me see how it's going. And if I find some spot that I get stuck or I need some help, let me come back and ask. Thank you for, for offering to, to get me help if I need it. Those are kinds of things that, that answers that a manager is looking for. They, they want to know that this person is okay in what they're doing. I, I know when I would go up and ask people if they needed some help, if they did, great. I would just look to do that, to get them some help. One of the things you have to recognize is that from the standpoint of being a manager or being in charge or being a leader, is that you are there to help remove obstacles. And so if there's something that's slowing you down or that's a problem for you, it's my job as the manager to help take that away. Well, I won't know that unless you tell me. So I, I think absolutely acknowledge their, their offer for help. If you need some, it's okay to say you do. If you don't, just let them know. Thank you. I appreciate it. Maybe I don't need it at this time or I don't need it on this project. But I think it's important to acknowledge that. Thank you for uh, this wonderful opinion because I agree with you that sometimes managers don't see uh, this situation in this way. Like uh, they show, they see it as a strength. They see it as uh, it's uh, that um, this person is leader. This person is really acknowledging the offer, saying thank you. They know when they need me, but they don't have the fear to to um, show their limitation or to show their need or the need of the support. So I totally agree with you. That's a very good point. So how do you see um, this person uh, handling the, um, uh, I can say the limitation or setting the boundaries? Uh, how can they really know 
when they ask for for the support or help and when they say i can do it by myself how can this person differentiate those two um, pathways i can say well i think you need to know within yourself is this a project that you're very comfortable with maybe this is a project you've done 15 times before and so you know how it goes you know the process you're very comfortable with it you don't need any help but maybe it's one that this is the first time you're doing it. And so maybe you're unfamiliar with something or you're not familiar with the technology. It's perfectly okay to say that I, I could use some help on this project. Um, I, I think to be able to be independent enough and strong enough in your own knowledge of what you can do to know what you're good at and what you're not, here's your boundaries. If it's something that I'm really good at, no, I don't really need any help on this project. But if it's not, even to say I might need some help, let me get into it. I, I think that's something that we look for. If you can tell them that you appreciate their guidance, that's the important piece. Because remember, from the manager's standpoint, that's their job. Their job is to try and help you to make sure that you're able to get the job done. They're not there to do it for you, but if you need some help, that's their job to get it for you. A great perspective, because I can see that also the person uh, always need to focus on their learning and uh, growth. So when the manager feel that the person is asking and is keen to learn new things, the manager will show support. The manager will uh, will uh, help the person in the succession plan to achieve the personal and organizational goal. So that's really important to be uh, even open to feedback and to work on the skills and competencies because this will give you the confidence over time and um, might help uh, you uh, to build the trust. I would like to hear more from you about uh, the learning and the growth from Anthony's perspective. Well, let, let me just say that the thing that happens with learning and growth, people are afraid to fail. And we can't be afraid to fail. If, if you're afraid to fail, you're never going to try. You're never going to do it. Failure is not a bad thing if you learn from it. And, and so I think that's part of the learning curve. Everybody has to do something for the very first time. Nobody's an expert in everything the day that they're born. So you're learning constantly. That's growth. And if you can show that to your manager, that you are learning things, that you're willing to try some new things. Maybe you've been doing something one way for a long time and it works. And maybe they suggest a different way of doing it. If you try it, maybe it'll work. That's the way that you're going to succeed. That's the way that you're going to grow. And I think that's the key that admitting that you could learn something for it, admitting that you're willing to try, those are things that a manager is looking for. Great. So this will bring me to this point of the communication part, because you mentioned um, this communication between the, like, the person, Anthony, and uh, the manager. So how can Anthony communicate effectively in order to ensure that he's playing part and playing role in his growth with the support of the manager? Well, the very first thing is that there needs to be an open line of communication between the manager and the employee so that they can feel freely to talk about things, to talk about a project, to talk about something they're working on, to talk about things that are going on in the organization. There needs to be a clear channel that's open so that they can express those things. And you need to be able to communicate in a way that's going to be understandable. Uh, you know, we talk about communicating effectively. Well, that means that your communication is something that's going to be understood. So if you're having a problem with something, be able to explain what the problem is. Be able to explain why you have a, a slowdown on something or why this part of the project is difficult. Be able to explain that in a way that the other person understands it completely. Effective communication is, is the only way that you're going to get through any issue and the only way that you're going to move forward. 
Great, great. Thank you for uh, showing us the importance of effective communication. And this will bring me to um, this idea of um, seeking support from colleagues. You know, sometimes you um, you are in this situation that you are saying, should I go to my colleague or should I go to my manager? You know, so how do you see this dilemma, especially in Anthony's situation? I think your colleagues can be your biggest help along the way. They've probably all experienced the same things that you're experiencing. And there's a comfort level knowing that you're not alone, that you're not out on some island all by yourself. Everybody there is working on different projects. They all have frustrations. They all have good times, bad times, days that they're up, days that they're down, projects that are difficult, projects that are easy. Being able to communicate that, again, it goes back to some effective communication, but being able to talk to your colleagues about what's going on. Maybe they've done that project before. Maybe they have a way of doing it. Maybe they know exactly what the manager's looking for, what the organization needs, and maybe they can help explain it. It's, it's a key in any organization that people talk to each other. If they're not talking to each other, they're not getting the job done the right way. Everybody needs to understand what everybody does. Not that, like Dr. Ahmed, I, I can't do what you do, but I need to understand what you do. It helps me to do what I do. And, and that's what you need with your colleagues is to be able to share some of those experiences, share some of what's going on. Those are helpful things. Those are the things that move projects forward. Great, great uh, point of view, because I totally agree with you that even this will bring um, more valuable insights from colleagues and each other. Also, it will give the encouragement to the colleagues that they can also come back to Anthony and say, Anthony, we need your help in this. And it's a very healthy communication because at the end it will be adding value to the organization. So uh, I loved your perspective about the effective communication, even with colleagues. That's really nice because everyone have a uniqueness and that's why we complete each other. Um, this will bring me to uh, the point of building trust between Anthony and the manager. So how can he make sure that the effective communication when he asks or um, when he needs the help or support is really adding value to the business relationship between him and his manager, not taking from his credit? So. I would like to, to see your perspective about building trust between Anthony and his manager in this situation. Thank you. Well, I think if we look at this concept of building trust with the manager, let's circle all the way around back to the very beginning of the whole question that he's asking about asking for help or not asking for help. What will build trust with the manager is honesty. If he's honest about when he needs help, that builds trust. If he's not honest and he can't finish the project because he's afraid to ask, that's not going to build trust. Or if he is working on something and the manager says, you know, asks him if he needs some help or some assistance, and he says no when he really needs that help, that's not going to build trust. Building trust is being honest. And if you're honest with your manager and you can admit where your weaknesses are or something that you have yet to learn or something you haven't done before or you're unsure of, asking questions helps build that trust because then that manager is going to know this project is in good hands. This is somebody who's going to get it done the right way, who wants to make sure that they're getting it done the right way, who's asking all the questions to get it done the right way who's important enough and confident enough in their own skills that they can ask for help. And that's a key to this whole conversation. Your confidence in yourself is what allows you to ask for help. People that don't ask for help aren't very confident in their skills. And so they're trying to hide their weakness. They're trying to hide their lack of knowledge of something. If, if somebody put a trigonometry problem in front of me today, I couldn't do it. Maybe when I was back in college, maybe I could have figured it out. I couldn't do that today, so I would ask for help. 
Well, even routine things. I mean, I have problems with a computer. I'm not an IT whiz. And so I'll ask for help on it. Does it make me a weak person? Does it make me incompetent? No, it makes me somebody that's honest that I have limitations. I'm good at some things. I'm not good at other things. That's a human being. And I think that's the key here that Anthony needs to know is that if you want to build that trust with your manager, be honest. Tell him what you can do well. Tell him what you can't do well. Tell him what you need training on or you need some help or some experience. That's going to build trust because then that manager is going to know that any project he puts in front of you is going to get done right because you're going to ask for the questions that you need help on. Great, great point. I, I like uh, this part uh, about uh, people who have the confidence are really the people who are going to ask for help or support. That's really a strength. That's really um, bringing power. And uh, this is leadership. Thank you for sharing uh, those wonderful points. So let me summarize uh, what we shared today uh, in this wonderful session, uh, Tea with ATE. So we shared together that being honest with ourselves, like Anthony needs to be honest with himself regarding the limitations and um, the strengths. And this is really a maturity and the self-awareness. Then uh, you talked with us today, uh, Professor Zage, about acknowledging uh, the manager offer. Thank, thank you. Having this gratitude that the manager is supporting and also saying that we are going to get back to you, manager, if we have any issue or if we have any challenge or if we need help. So you are having this gratitude and you are thanking, but at the same time, you are saying, I have the strength to ask if I need help. Then you took us, Professor, to setting boundaries, to handling certain tasks independently and also going to the manager if we need the support. You took us toward the focusing on the learning and growth, like working on skills and competencies, being open to feedback. And you mentioned that communication, to communicate effectively and the communication is playing major part, whether when we seek support from colleagues or even from the manager. And then you said all of this, if it was done correctly, this will build the trust between Anthony and the manager. And that's a healthy communication, which will add value to the organization and to the person as a leader. Thank you so much today, Professor Zaj. I have, have one last thought to sort of wrap up what we're talking about. Please. To me, when I look at this question, this comes down to the whole concept of fear of failure. You don't want to admit that you can't do something or you're afraid you're going to do something wrong. And failure is what we learn from. From the time that we're a baby, we're learning how to do things and we fail at it. Look at how many times it takes a baby falling down before they learn how to walk. But let me give you a, a, an example that sticks out in my mind all the time. And I think about Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison was credited with inventing the electric light bulb. Now, it was an incandescent light bulb, and we don't use a lot of those anymore, but we used them for a hundred years. It was the source of light for everything. But in making that light bulb, he went through some 300 different elements before he found tungsten as an element that would work and burn long enough to make a light bulb that was worth keeping. Well, that meant he failed some 295 times or whatever that was, but he kept going. He learned from each failure, and that's what this is all about. We are often as human beings afraid to fail because we don't want to look bad. And Anthony's question here, he doesn't want to look bad in the manager's eyes by failing. But you're going to fail if you don't ask for help when you need it. And then you're going to look bad because he asked you if you needed help and you said no and you couldn't do the job. So don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to ask for help. It's not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength. Great. So uh, thank you so much. And uh, we look forward 
to see you all next week. Thank you, Professor Zinch. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed, and I will see you next week.